Sister. Yes, please. Um, today I will be used at responding to the. Uh, oh, my opponent. Uh, my. Um, my opponent's claim is that religious devotion has a negative impact on education and, and success of American citizens. And um, his secondary claim for that education is a key to success in American society and that is uh, that it's becoming a necessity. And um, second, that. Uh, more religious states are less educated, and least religious states are more educated. And lastly, that more religious, that being more religious is just less, less educated and more impoverished. Which I didn't think he was, um, and he needed more clarification on his last secondary claim. Uh, on his first secondary claim, I agree with him because you do need an education to be success uh, successful, and. Uh, well, I think he could have done more research on his first secondary claim, and then, oh, well, according to the bureaucracy of labor statistics, 9.4 of people who aren't employed only have a high school diploma, and 4.4 of people who are unemployed have a college degree or higher, which shows that education does make a difference. Um, secondly, uh, I think he did a good job in stating the most religious states, and then saying that they were also the poorest states. Like, for example, um, how in 2009 Mississippi ranked as the most religious state with 82% of its people saying that religious is really, uh, religion is really important, but it also ranked the poorest state with 20.8%. Um, I thought it was good how he demonstrated his knowledge in knowing what states were the poorest and their, uh, their percentage of religion. Uh, lastly, I thought, like, well, I, I kind of didn't understand his last claim by saying that more religious, less educated, more impoverished. I don't know if he meant as a whole or individually. And then I did more research, and um, uh, people individually who are more religious, uh, more religious, uh, do better than, like, I guess when put as a whole. Uh, in 2003, Dr. William James, professor at Cal State Long Beach. Uh, who also graduated number one in, uh, in his class of going uh, after graduating from Harvard, said that students with high levels of religious commitment do better than students with lower levels of religious commitment on most tests for, of academic achievement. And then um, later on, he also had uh, test results which proved that religious students' mean score was 53.72 and 54.66. And oh, and then the least. The less religious students scored a 50.0, 50.0, and 50.36, which isn't a big difference, but I guess them being religious made them score um, higher. But overall, like I don't think, I don't think really. Well, I think he spoke more about like countries that are religious, and then like where they rank where they rank like being poor or not, he didn't really talk about the impact that it has on religion. And I think he could have done more research on that. But, yeah. That's it. What's that? Do I do? Yes. Right, Adela, I, you, most of your argument sounds like it's an evaluation rather than a refutation. You're offering a critique of his speech rather than a uh, argument about the speech. The one place where you have the clearest dispute is on that third point where you found some uh, data that directly contradicts the inference that the advocate's making. In other words, the higher people have uh, religious affiliation, the better they perform in schools. You've got two really good quotes on that, and that directly addresses the, the claim that the advocate's presenting. On the first point, uh, you're mostly accepting the point, and uh, like I said, you're just doing kind of evaluation about how good a job he did as opposed to whether or not the argument is 
is valid, whether the reasoning is sound, uh, whether the grounds seem to make any sense. The same thing on the second point. In fact, on the second point, which I thought was some pretty odd uh, reasoning when the advocate presented it originally, you basically go along with the notion of the correlation as a uh, causation claim on this, and I, I thought that that was uh, problematic. Now, like I said, on the third point, that information uh, is potentially applicable to that second point also, but you mostly seem to be letting it get away with that state-by-state uh, -state comparison. Um, you know, those, those were the, like I said, the strongest argument was on that third point. It just doesn't sound like you have figured out exactly what your position is on the issue, and it would enhance your credibility if you could be a little bit more focused. And like I said, I, I think maybe you misunderstood a little bit because you're not really supposed to be evaluating his argument like uh, you're doing in the peer evaluations. This is an answer to the argument. If you were the you know the advocate on the other side it's, it's sort of like in a criminal case if you if you went you know, if you're the defense attorney and you got up and said damn the prosecutor's evidence is really good here and I, I can see why they'd make that inference here's some other evidence that if they'd made that it would have been an even better argument I think my client would be going what hey wait a second what's going on here you know now you did have a you know like I said you did have the the counterclaim that uh, applies to that, like the contradictory sign about uh, you know the statistical correlation and those numbers. And by the way, that point, you know, that five percent difference that you're talking about, that's a statistically significant uh, result with the religious studies and the, with the people who have the high religious affiliation. And in the context of that kind of argument, a number like that is actually going to be pretty substantial. So uh, that would have been something that I think maybe you could have developed a little bit more. But like I said, that was the best part of the argument. All right, thank you.